Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Mike the Manic Geek here, and I'm bringing you my review of the SwiftTech H140X All-in-One Liquid CPU Cooler. Now, SwiftTech's been bringing a lot of expandable all-in-one liquid cooling to the market recently with their H220X and their H240X kits. But this one's doing something a little bit different. It's giving you a smaller radiator with the same exact uh, Apogee XL CPU water block, which is their current flagship unit that they've got. You've got the same MCP30 pump. You've got the same SwiftTech Helix fan that comes with each of the other kits, but it fits in a more compact form factor. So we're gonna take a look at this unit today, uh, check, check out what it comes with in the box, do some performance testing on it, and I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on where I feel this device really sits in the market of uh, water cooling in at, at large. So um, enough of my yammering on, let's get into the box, see what it comes with. So inside the box, we have the H140X cooler itself, along with all of its mounting hardware, some different color plates for the lighting, and an eight fan pulse width modulated fan hub. We also get some of SwiftTech's Timmate thermal paste and some pretty easy to follow instructions despite a lack of words on them. Nice touch. The Apogee XL block that comes with this kit is the same one that you can purchase separately. And all the fittings on this kit can be replaced later on with your own. However, if you wanna change out the fitting on the pump, you're gonna need a special adapter that unfortunately is sold separately. Something that I feel is a little bit of an oversight on SwiftTech's part and probably should have been included in the kit in the first place. The radiator can be mounted in just about any orientation you want, except for one like this. Because if you mount it like this, that's gonna starve the pump of water and you run the risk of bricking your kit. The SwiftTech Helix 140 millimeter fan that comes with this is pulse width modulated, has some black sleeving on the cable, and is relatively quiet at almost all RPMs, which is a nice touch. Now the tubing that comes with this kit represents a company-wide departure from plasticizers in their tubing. This is something that they plan to implement moving forward on all of their kits and their standalone rolls of tube. Now in order to effectively use the pulse width modulated fan hub, you're going to want to plug your pump RPM sensor into channel 1 and then plug all of your other relevant system fans into the other headers on this hub. Then run the RPM sensor from the hub onto the CPU fan header on your motherboard and let it take care of the rest. Now here's a breakdown of some of the testing methodology, the hardware used, and the performance results. So there you have it guys, there's the performance numbers on this kit. Um, as a standalone unit, I'm not going to lie, that's about where I expected this thing to perform. Uh, what was interesting to note though, was how much the fan speed uh, really influenced uh, the, the rate of cooling with this unit, especially when we started uh, upping the clock speeds on the processor that I used for testing here. Um, it's a really solid fan and really quiet too. I really couldn't hear this thing up until I was hitting about 80% fan speed, um, which really is, is right about where I feel like the sweet spot is for this particular fan. Um, but even still, cooling performance was fantastic on this thing uh, for as quiet as it is. Uh, definitely wasn't expecting that given some of the chatter that I've heard on, uh, on Swift Tech fans. Um, even the pump for this unit is remarkably quiet up until about the 25 to 2700 RPM range, at which point then you get start to get through some of, the, uh, some of that sort of uh, gritty pump noise. But more often than not, your pump's not going to run much louder than about 3000 RPMs, and even at that point, your system fans are probably still going to be just a bit louder than your pump, or they're going to match pump noise, and it's going to drown it out largely. I mean... I mean, you guys see how close this thing sits to where I normally do all my gaming and video editing and everything, and I, it never even bothered me. And I have an anxiety problem. Yeah, that's kind of impressive. If it doesn't bother me, it definitely shouldn't bother you guys. Now, as far as, as, far as the looks go, obviously this thing looks the part. Uh, the tubing runs are nice and clean. The matte black finish on the tubing that they're using now actually, to me, looks better than the high gloss stuff. And it also hides fingerprints a hell of a lot better. 
Um, I have a really bad problem with fingerprint burning on, uh, on plastics that I touch, and I don't really get that with this tubing. Never mind the fact that I also don't have to worry about plasticizer leaching into my loop over time, which is, again, very welcome. Um, <clears throat> you know, the other nice thing about this kit is that mounting it at the back of the case, which is really where this was intended to be mounted in the first place, uh, yeah, sure, you can mount it at other locations, but the fact that you can mount this at the back of your case gives you a really convenient fill port for your system that allows gravity to fill the water into your loop for you. And because it's located where it is, if you in reincorporate something like uh, an additional uh, GPU water block or uh, something like that into, into the loop, then your drain port is also going to be at the lowest part of the loop, which means that it's going to be a lot easier for you to run maintenance on your system afterwards. And that's a convenience that's very hard to come by in a lot of, uh, in a lot of custom water cooling loops. Um, and it's something that I strive for with the loops that I make, uh, just because I'm extremely lazy and the less work I have to do with something, the better. So <clears throat> that being said, if you're looking at this unit just to buy it as is and plug it in like that, you're probably missing the point and I would probably spend my money elsewhere. Because at $130, the price of this kit is kind of hard to justify as a standalone unit. I mean, that's more expensive than kits like the H100i or even more expensive than, than similar all-in-one 280 millimeter cooling solutions. But that's not the point here. The point here is to purchase this unit to get a really strong start to a custom water cooling loop at less than half the price. I mean, even going through uh, SwiftTech's own website and pricing out parts individually, a loop like this is gonna run you damn near $285 on its own. So the fact that they're able to package a, a kit like this at $130, realistically, that is a pretty good bargain. But you must approach it from the perspective of wanting to expand the loop in the future. That's the only way you're going to get maximum bang for your buck out of a kit like this. But in comparison to something like the H220 or H240X, like I just stated before, you do get the added convenience of having a really easy to locate and use fill port for your loop when you expand it in the future. Now granted, most people, when you expand off of a loop like this, are going to want to at least add in one extra radiator because, you know, how much could a 140 millimeter radiator actually cool, right? Actually, that's a good question. How much can a 140 millimeter radiator actually cool? I mean, if you think about it, there's cases out there like the Fractal Design Node 304 or the Thermal Take Core V1 Mini ITX case that can accommodate up to a 140 millimeter radiator in them. Especially in the case of this guy, who has a really small dimensional form factor. You only have to be able to accommodate the radiator and pump intruding into the case. And in the case of both of those uh, chassis, you're not going to have a problem with that. Which does beg the question, is the point of this kit really to allow it to shine in a small form factor system? I mean, really, most, most super small form factor computers are not going to be able to comfortably accommodate a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator uh, to cool all of your components. But if you had something like who say a locked i5 processor and something like a GTX 670 R9 285 or hell even a, a new GTX 970 that runs the uh, the ITX form factor could you actually cool all of those components on a single 140 millimeter radiator well unfortunately that's a question to answer in another video but Leave me some feedback below in the comments section. Let me know if you guys would like me to test that theory that a single 140 millimeter radiator could comfortably cool 
a stock clock processor and a small form factor graphics card. I have a GTX 670 that I can throw at this loop to test. Uh, I just need to source the parts, but I want to know if you guys want to see it. So yeah, leave me some feedback in the comments below. Let me know what's up. Um, also like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you disliked it, uh, leave a comment, let me know some of the other stuff that you'd want to see uh, uh, in my future videos. Also, let me know um, what ideas you guys would have for a cooling system like the H140X, because really it's a, it's a great system, even at its price. It's a fantastic system, and I would, I, I would personally recommend this to anyone that's looking to have the convenience of not only an expandable all-in-one cooling system, but also something that is going to give you the convenience of an easy-to-access fill port and have uh, a gorgeous display for, for a really small reservoir on the side, convenient location for your pump, uh, a CPU water block that's going to match just about any system that you could possibly throw it at. I mean, hell, even if, it, even if your system is like yellow or gold or something, just take the white uh, LED block out of, the, out, of, out of the CPU block, spray paint it yellow, drop it back in, Bob's your uncle. You've got a matching system again. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much wraps things up for us here. Uh, that was my review of the SwiftTech H140X liquid CPU cooler. Um, definitely gets my recommendation here at the Manic Geek. Um, but for right now, visiting hours are done. So I'm going to head on back to the loony bin. Catch you guys next time.